But one of our most popular videos is all about truckers. And so this story is all about trucking, you guys, because a federal safety board says marijuana rescheduling could imperil truck drivers drug testing despite the transportation secretary's assurances that's right the national transportation safety board the ntsb is warning that marijuana rescheduling could create a blind spot with respect to drug testing of federally regulated workers in safety sensitive positions despite assurances last month from u.s transportation secretary pete Buttigieg uh, that the cannabis rescheduling proposal would not alter the federal drug testing requirements the NT ntsb said in a press release on tuesday that the biden administration's proposed move of cannabis to schedule three of the controlled substances act could imperily federally required drug testing for airline pilots truck drivers and many others in safety sensitive positions can you imagine pilots just flying high Moving marijuana to Schedule 3 without taking steps to ensure that marijuana testing remains within the scope of pre-employment, random, reasonable suspicion, and post-accident drug testing would create a safety blind spot, the board said. Americans consider marijuana safer than alcohol and cigarettes. And in a quote, the NTSB is concerned that the proposed rule to move marijuana to Schedule 3 of the CSA would, upon become, becoming effective, immediately prohibit continued testing of safety-sensitive transportation employees for marijuana use. Under relevant regulations, the comment submitted to the federal docket said, uh, because the HHS certified laboratories used for such testing are not authorized to test for Schedule 3 controlled substances, this would mean that airline pilots, airline maintenance workers, bus and truck drivers, uh, uh, locomotive engineers, subway train operators, ship captains, pipeline operators, personnel transporting hazardous materials, and other safety-sensitive transportation employees would be prevented from being tested for marijuana use, the NTSB claims. Many of those positions are regulated by the Department of Transportation, better known as the DOT, and the board is therefore urging the DEA to ensure that any final rule to rescheduling marijuana does not compromise marijuana testing under the DOT and HHS procedures applicable to safety sensitive transportation of employees. In a hearing late last month with co congressional lawmakers, however, Pete Buttigieg said that the DOT specifically lists marijuana as a substance to screen for. Even if rescheduling were to take place, he said, that wouldn't change the DOT's testing rules. In a quote, he says, our understanding of the rescheduling of marijuana from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 is that it would not alter DOT's marijuana on a testing requirements with respect to the regulated community. The secretary said at the time in another quote, for private individuals who are performing safety sensitive functions subject to drug testing, marijuana is identified by name, not by reference to one of those classes. So even if it moves in its classification, we do not believe that that would have a direct impact on that authority. That's interesting. DOT did not immediately respond to a request for comment from a marijuana moment on Tuesday on how NTSB's concerns square with Buttigieg's testimony. And at the hearing, Buttigieg was responding to a question from Representative Rick Crawford from uh, Arkansas uh, during a hearing of the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. The congressman had referenced concerns from the American Trucking Association, the ATA, about the broad public health and safety consequences of reclassification classification on the national highway system uh, and its users, which ATA voiced in a recent letter to Buttigieg. And the rescheduling and deregulation of marijuana would inevitably cause a number of people driving impaired while high to grow. That doesn't make sense, but whatever. And Crawford said, can you speak to what your department is doing to ensure that transportation workers and safety relevant positions can continue to be tested for marijuana use if this proposal goes forward and how your department plans to address transportation safety in light of DOJ rulemaking? Buttigieg replied that any impaired driving via alcohol, marijuana, or any other source of impairment is of course a major safety concern. While transportation continued that DOT continuing to evaluate any indirect impact of rescheduling, he said the agency doesn't expect 
any drug testing requirement relevant uh, that uh, that to be changed based on the reclassification decision. It's not immediately clear which other federal employees would still be required to be tested for marijuana or if rescheduling goes through. While Buttigieg is correct that drivers are required to be tested for a panel of drugs, including marijuana, federal employees are subject to both blanket workforce policies and agency specific ones. And as it stands, the use of a Schedule 1 and Schedule 2 drugs by federal government workers is prohibited under a 1986 executive order from then President Ronald Reagan that established the federal drug free workplace program and while individual agencies have adopted their own policies regarding drug use many are rooted in the Reagan order because that order defines illegal drugs as only those in schedule one and schedule two and some attorneys believe rescheduling to schedule three could lift marijuana restrictions that currently apply to all federal workers. Well, that's an interesting point right there. At a separate hearing on Tuesday, NTSB Chair Jennifer Homendy submitted written testimony highlighting the board's concerns about rescheduling in a quote. As you know, the NTSB has long been concerned about impairment in all modes of transportation, she said. This includes our concerns about marijuana use among crew members and other safety-sensitive personnel in rail. We believe there will be a serious negative impact on transportation safety if the DEA moves forward with rescheduling without addressing the issues further detailed in our comment. At last month's hearing, uh, at last month's earlier hearing with Buttigieg, Representative Michael Bose, Republican from Illinois, uh, also pressed the Transportation Secretary on the impact of marijuana rescheduling on drug testing for truckers, school bus drivers, subway operators, and other federally regulated transportation workers. And in a quote, our commitment to that testing continues regardless of the schedule, and we believe our um, authorities are intact too because they don't call for testing by reference to where marijuana marijuana sits in its classification, but rather it's specific named. And Buttigieg responded in a quote says, so whether we're talking about the regulated community, those drivers you were talking about, or whether we're talking about our own personnel, someone with a security clearance or someone in a tower or understanding is, is that at this time, it is that nothing about that reclassification would change our practices. Chris uh, Spear, ATA CEO, said afterward that he appreciated the exchange between Crawford and Buttigieg, and in a quote says, we are grateful to Congressman Crawford for uh, elevating this serious issue, and we appreciate Secretary Buttigieg's focus on providing the transportation industry with the clarity it needs to continue screening for marijuana use among safety-sensitive transportation workers. Spear said in a quote, if the, uh, if the trucking industry's ability to conduct drug testing for marijuana use were to be restricted, a heightened risk of impaired drivers would threaten our nation's roadways. DOT and ATA share the goals of achieving zero highway fatalities and ensuring the commercial driving workforce is qualified to safely operate, which is why we are committed to partnering with DOT to mitigate harmful impacts caused by the potential reclassification of marijuana. The ATA letter to Buttigieg was part of an ongoing effort to raise the alarm about the proposal to move marijuana from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 of the Controlled Substance. Act, and the group said in an earlier press release, this major policy shift could have significant negative consequences for highway safety, endangering all those who share the road. ATA said it intended to engage the Department of Justice and the Department of Health and Human Services and other federal partners to ensure that any change in the law regarding the status and legality of marijuana use is accompanied by an explicit allowance for the testing of marijuana use by the DOT, regulated safety-sensitive workers workers, end quote. But while the trucking industry is raising the alarm, truckers themselves apparently feel differently about the proposed policy shift. As part of an ongoing public comment period round rescheduling, um, some commercial drivers have weighed in to defend the rescheduling. Comments from truckers overwhelmingly favor the change, though at least uh, some appeared to believe rescheduling would indeed allow them to use medical marijuana while away from work. And another trucker who was claimed to be a driving instructor pushed back on the notion that the regulatory change would signal to drivers that it's okay to consume before a shift. In a quote, he says, I would expect my drivers not to drink alcohol at work, take NyQuil before a shift, or a prescription that would interfere with driving, or get behind the wheel with a lack of sleep. The uh, the commentator wrote, and it says also, at the same 
at the same would apply to those who take cannabis. More broadly, 9 in 10 who submitted comments on marijuana rescheduling supported moving the substance out of Schedule 1 of the Controlled Substances Act, according to a new analysis by the firm Headset. A separate analysis from the Drug Policy Alliance found that roughly 70% of comments support decriminalizing marijuana or removing cannabis from the CSA completely. Well, that is great news. And as for more, uh, more states legalize marijuana, a federal report published earlier this year showed that the number of positive drug tests among commercial drivers fell in 2023 compared to the year before, dropping from 57,597 in 2022 to 54,464 in the last year. At the same time, however, the number of drivers who refused to be screened at all also increased by 39%. Another question found that 65.4% of motor carriers believe current marijuana testing procedures should be replaced with methods that measure active impairment. And at the time, the report from the American Transportation Research Institute noted a 65,000 driver deficit in the country and said the fear of positives over marijuana metabolites, which can remain in a person's blood for long after active impairment, may be keeping would-be drivers out of the industry. The record high number of refusals came as the transportation industry faces a nationwide shortage of drivers, which some trade groups have said has only been made worse by drug testing policies that risk flagging drivers even when they're not impaired on the job. Current federal law mandates that commercial drivers abstain from cannabis, subjecting them to various forms of drug screening from pre-employment and to randomized testing. And in June of last year, meanwhile, an American Transportation Research Institute a survey of licensed U.S. truck drivers found that 70 72.4% supported loosening cannabis laws and testing policies. Another 66.5% said that marijuana should be federally legalized. And cannabis reform advocates, meanwhile, have also called on federal officials to change what they call discriminatory drug testing practices around the trucking industry. In a quote, tens of thousands of workers are leaving the commercial trucking industry because the federal government refuses to update its antiquated marijuana policies, Paul Armentado, deputy director of Normal, wrote in a, uh, in a Marijuana Moment op-ed earlier this year. And in another quote says, fewer truckers on the road results in supply chain shortages and higher prices for the goods Americans rely on. A top Wells Fargo analysis said that in 2022 that there's one main reason for rising costs and worker shortages in the transportation sector, federal marijuana criminalization, and resulting drug testing mandates that persist even as more states enact legalization. Representative Earl Blumenhauer, Democrat from Oregon, sent a letter to the head of the DOT back in 2022 emphasizing that the agency's policies on drug testing truckers and other commercial drivers for marijuana use are unnecessary, costing people their jobs and contributing to supply chain losses. Last year's ATRI report noted that research into the impact of cannabis use on driving and highway safety is currently mixed, complicating rulemaking to, the, to address the issue. And a separate 2019 report from the Congressional Research Service uh, similarly found that evidence about the cannabis's ability to impair driving is inconclusive. Also last year, the DOT finalized a rule permitting another alternative option to screening urine samples, saliva-based testing. Depending on uh, frequency of use, THC is generally detectable in saliva anywhere from 1 to 24 hours after use, according to the agency. And in 2022, meanwhile, DOT proposed guidance warning commercial drivers who use CBD products as they are doing so at their own risk. A newsletter from DOT's Federal Transit Administration published that same year included two sections on cannabis issues, one that again reminded employees that they're barred from using marijuana and another that similarly warned that CBD products remain unregulated and could contain THC levels that are detectable in a drug test. And meanwhile, the head of the ATA told Congress a year ago that the state federal marijuana policy conf is con conflicting is creating a litigious environment for the trucking industry contributing to the challenge of the labor shortage. And in a quote, want to smoke weed at home? Smoke weed at home if it's legal? Fine, ATA President Speer said at the time. And in another quote says, do not get behind the wheel of an 80,000 pound vehicle. We need to have strong standards and we need to enforce the law. Well, 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 this article brings up so, so, so many issues. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about that. And I'm sorry that is, that article was so long. But nonetheless, what do you all have to say about this? I liked your little teleprompter dance at the you beginning. Like that? that was, was good. Cute. That was good. Yeah. I mean, I like, I'm, I'm glad. The, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jenny. 
I just want to, my mommy's a truck driver, so shout out to truck drivers. Um, but, you know, they're not allowed to have alcohol even in their truck. So, like, they mm-hmm. can't have alcohol in their truck. I told you before, I got my mom some hemp-based hair products because she has hair like mine that's a little insane, and it's specially formulated for that. But it had, like, pictures of weed leaves on it, right? And mm-hmm. she was, she gave it to my sister. She was scared to, like, even have it in her truck. So, you know, I mean, the suggestion that they don't drink alcohol, it's not a suggestion. They're not even allowed to have it in the truck, even when they're off, even when they're mm-hmm. shut down. You have to understand over-the-road truck drivers these are their homes as well so i wanted to just clear that up i think you know safety first we've seen a lot of truck drivers do some crazy shit some of them are better than others and you know it brings me back thoughts of the guy that didn't stop in colorado and unfortunately you know was it colorado wherever that was that that killed all those people and um you know Mm -hmm. i think safety is important i do think that people should be able to medicate themselves as they want when they're in their off time and i don't think that most truck drivers are going to go, you know, throw 3.5 in a backwood and, and hit mm-hmm. the road with their truck. Oh, man. Can you imagine that? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I agree with what you said, Jenny Beth. I think, first of all, th- the comparison to alcohol is is the best thing that you can do because, yes, that's a lawful activity. But just because you're allowed to drink does not mean that you're allowed to get behind an 18-wheeler and drive around after slamming a couple beers in the morning like there's and nobody believes that that's the case nobody has ever suggested that because alcohol is legal that it's going to lead to an increase Mm -hmm. in uh in truckers consuming alcohol but the main thing is i'm glad that the article brought up that point about the shortage of truck drivers yeah i remember reading the article about this i don't remember if it was 2023 or late 2022 but it was a big issue where a lot of truck drivers were not renewing their credentials or continuing to drive because of specifically because of marijuana testing Mm -hmm. and i think this actually points to a bigger issue when it comes to road safety uh and sobriety tests for for cannabis is right now the testing that's done whether it's a blood or a urine test is not actually indicative of intoxication at the time right Mm -hmm. yes you may have used it in the past but there's no direct correlation to oh my blood has X nanograms of, of THC metabolites in it, then I must be intoxicated. And this is that's the real issue here that needs to be solved, not just for truckers, but for for general law enforcement stopping regular motorists as well, is that mm-hmm. they don't have any real way of, of measuring intoxication from cannabis at the time the way that we have a breathalyzer for alcohol. And that is the problem that really needs to be solved. And then I think this concern about whether it applies to truck drivers is not really an issue at that point. Mm-hmm. That's true. I think the problem uh, is how this is in, is metabolized in the body. People want to make the comparison to alcohol, which it absolutely can't be compared to. You can do a time analysis of how the liver detoxifies alcohol, and it's pretty steady. That's why they have the numbers they have. You can't do that with cannabis. And one of the issues that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks is cops using cannabis off the job Mm -hmm. or people with a gun using cannabis. Okay, now we're looking at public safety. We don't have a clue of what to do to to measure impairment. That's what they're after is impairment. You know, my dad was a truck driver, too. He was a teetotaler, so it never was a question of him going to drink or take other drugs. He didn't want to do it. But I started smoking weed from an early age. And there was just no way for him to understand. And basically, you're unimpaired after an hour or so for the average consumer. But that's not a game you want to play with the trucking industry. They are driving a dangerous vehicle. It's like flying a plane. Yeah. I don't want you to have any of the stuff in your system, but we can help it. And to restrict people from industries because they might take a drink off the job or some other Uh, intoxicant we like to call them we don't have the way to bridge from where we are now to an actual test for impairment that a typical cop can do to figure out on the road if you're impaired and then in court we bring in dueling experts and no jury wants to convict somebody when no one can tell you that having you know five nanograms in your blood makes you automatically impaired because you can't prove that this is just a mess and i think Buttigieg, when he said we've got marijuana specifically stated in these statutes is important because the executive order from reagan was that it was an executive order Mm -hmm. and whoever the president is if this thing gets rescheduled 
and issued an executive order to include marijuana in Schedule 3 or just not even mention Schedule 3, just make sure marijuana is included in these testing standards. I just, this, this is an example for me of how inside the government, they're going to drag their feet as long as they can, yep. find every excuse they can to drag this out so that we don't get a decision made. And I, I just, I don't trust them, basically. And the science is just not there. So I don't know what this argument is actually going to Oh, I just don't see a solution to this right I now. I think from a safety standpoint, you can tell, like, if somebody's too high to drive, like, listen, I've been high, and I've been high as fuck, and, like, mm -hmm. I would not drive a car after, you know, like, judging Emerald Cup, I sat there for two hours just dabbing rosin. Probably shouldn't have driven a car. Didn't. Took a nap. Ate a snack. Right? Like, if we're looking for testing standards and how to quantify just how intoxicated someone is, I think that's probably more about, you know, being able to prosecute them than mm -hmm. actually keep people safe. You know what I mean? Like, you can, we have, like, field sobriety tests for a reason. I probably wouldn't have done so hot on something that's going to make me stand still and stand straight and stand alert and, you know, whatever else litmus test you wanted to give me on that at my absolute highest. Mm -hmm. I had, I had a, a cop pull me over cause he thought I was smoking while driving and he pulled <laughs> me, he pulled me out of the car and gave me a whole sobriety test and, and whatnot. And he ended, ended the whole conversation with saying, I don't believe that you didn't smoke, but I also don't believe that you're too high to drive. Right. But I never admitted that I smoked. Otherwise, he would have definitely gave me a DUI. You know how Pigpen walked around on the what, peanuts that, with just a little that, cloud uh, of dust? You do that with like a little aura of weed smoke smell. So I was that state, Was that Fair CSP, enough. Jason? Is that State Patrol? Uh, yeah, it was actually the California Highway Patrol. Yep. It was. That it was. I just think it, it creates an interesting issue because I think the only solution that, uh, that the NTSB has for this or even the Department of Transportation ultimately is going to be some actual field s side type of sobriety test because you have to get the impairment when the driving is actually happening. And, and whether, you, whether you have to go and take a test before to get a license or whatnot, that only is testing you for, for that one period of time. And so I, th I think ultimately they, they have to revamp the, this, this, this whole testing thing. And, they, and the only way I think that they're going to get to where they want to be is if there is some type of standardized test that will actually measure your impairment at the time of an incident. Absolutely. And I think maybe, maybe one silver lining of this, again, I, I agree with Dale's point that this, is, this conversation is really just dragging out the process. Mm -hmm. But maybe one silver lining is that you have – other larger institutions and bureaucracies that now have an incentive in trying to figure out how to create that test for for actual impairment versus you, you know what i really would like to see too i would really like to see a study done on how much um cannabis consumption lowers road rage in america true i yeah. think i would really That's like to see that because I think that would be a very compelling study to combat a lot of these reefer madness narratives that the federal government comes up with. That's absolutely I would true. I would agree with that. And again, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and, and endorse that anybody gets behind the wheel after they after they smoke. But I personally do feel like I'm a more attentive driver when I'm a little bit stoned. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Well, the insurance companies have a stake in this too. And I was hired by insurance companies to try a bunch of cases. And you can just imagine a truck has a crash and there's a, a question of whether the driver was impaired. How do you prove or disprove impairment? Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things you want to look at is can we get any, any um, toxicology tests on the driver mm -hmm. or anybody like that? And then what does it mean? And it's, it's just a difficult problem. And there's a lot of money at stake when there's an injury here. And that's what we're all trying to prevent is injuries. You should not get behind the wheel if you're too fucked up to perform the average functions of driving yes, that vehicle. Totally, totally, Period. totally Full agree. Stop. Don't exactly. do it. No matter and if you do, I think you should have your ass kicked if you go out and hurt people. Yeah. No. No matter what the substance is, whether it's cannabis, alcohol, prescription drugs, it doesn't have to be a substance. Whether you're too tired, if you're, mm -hmm. you, know, yeah. you know, you're bipolar and you know you're off the meds and like losing your shit that day, probably shouldn't be driving either. I mean, there are a lot of things that can make you a dangerous driver, and that's just a selfish decision to, it to is. do it anyway. 